Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mawani. I hope you all are doing good. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. That means your interpersonal skills, right, matter more. Your emotional intelligence uh, matters more than your uh, pure, sheer, logical or intellectual or your intelligence. Uh, this is very important to understand and this is the thing that will help you with your preparation as well as your interview work on it there are many good books out there learn from it right to how you can develop or inculcate this positive attitude with this we have many important articles here this is about yes no and complicated it's complicated uh, i'll give you a gist of this article you will find schemes good schemes uh, like udan and other things are discussed by dr jitendra singh here here you find uh, all those things that are not going right in uh, under this modi government it is talking about uh, this uh, constitution it's talking about uh, that elections are not the only thing there are other things that matter uh, check and balance is not going on very well and things like that and here the best portion that i find in this article is this one it talks about missed opportunities and opportunities that are grabbed by modi government very fine and balanced view that you will find in this two things over here it is too positive and here it is too negative an easy read for you guys two editorials here this one is about by election that took place bjp faced a sort of defeat it's more this article this editorial is giving advice to bjp not that important for your examination this is about argentina economic crisis that uh, argentina is facing for a very long period of time again not that important directly for your examination but here we have three articles this one this one and this one these three articles are important for your understanding, for your capacity building and for your examination as well. So let's uh, analyze these three in detail. But before that, dear friends, as you can see on your screen, we have covered many different exams under uh, our pen drive and tablet courses. To find out more about it, check out studyiq.com or you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen. If you want to get in touch with me, this is my Facebook page here. This is my Twitter handle. And don't forget to hit the like button if you learn something from today's discussion and do share this lecture with your friends as well. Now, this article is about caretaker government. A couple of days ago, we talked about this thing that former Chief Justice of Pakistan has been appointed as a caretaker Prime Minister of Pakistan. Now, we know the history of Pakistan, right? Uh, military dictators have ruled Pakistan for a very long period of time. Even today, we find that they have this... Uh, uh, extra power in their hand they are the ones who are deciding international relationship we know this thing as far as india is concerned it's not this democratic government uh, that is uh, uh, the main you can say powerful body that is or that is influential enough uh, to develop a relationship with our country right uh, why we are arch rivals because pakistan's uh, the establishment that includes this army and isi they are the ones uh, who are creating troubles and they are the ones who design all these foreign policies in Pakistan. Officially on paper, it is the government, but uh, in real terms, in reality, it is this the establishment uh, that, that rules Pakistan. And that has been ruling Pakistan for a very long period of time. Now, Pakistan had uh, uh, 10 general elections uh, so far since 1970 and out of this 10 general elections you can say that only three one that took place in 1970 20, 2008 and 2013 these are the three elections that you can say have been a bit free apart from that other elections uh, were uh, affected or there was this influence of um, the establishment uh, not only in this whole election process, but also in the outcome, like who will be the prime minister was decided by or was a person who will be puppet, you know, of uh, uh, this establishment will become the prime minister. And that's what uh, has happened back in Pakistan. But recently what we find is that uh, uh, at present, right, uh, we have uh, longest democratic journey uh, Pakistan is going through it uh, since 2008 so nearly 10 years of democratic government gradually things are falling in line in Pakistan you can say that thing right uh, and this article is very interesting because it talks about major milestones as far as this military and democratic relationship are concerned now for a previous caretaker uh, caretaker prime minister if we go through their profile we find that five were politician and one was economist that was lent to pakistan by world bank but this is for 
a very first time in the history of Pakistan that we are finding a retired uh, judge of Supreme Court uh, who has been chosen as a caretaker, caretaker prime minister of Pakistan. So he will be in charge uh, till the new prime minister is elected. Now we have three institutions um, in Pakistan. Right here in our country, we have three institutions. We have legislature, we have uh, executives, and we have uh, judiciary. And you can say fourth is media. In Pakistan as well, media power is getting there slowly. It's uh, still, you know, not at its peak, but things are uh, progressing, right, gradually, which is not bad again. So you have uh, three institutions in Pakistan. One is military, the second one is judiciary, and the third is Parliament for five decades from 1958 to 2008 the military dominated bearing a few short years in 1970s now earlier on it was believed that uh, Judiciary and military they were working as a team right they used to back each other most of the time military used to take decision and judiciary used to give green signal to its decision uh, claiming or terming doctrine of necessity that it is necessary that a country like Pakistan is supporting military and this sort of stand was taken by judiciary earlier on but all these things changed uh, forever you can say not forever but it changed right there was a radical change back in 2007 when Parvej Musharraf who was dictator at that point of time he basically asked uh, Chief Justice of Pakistan to resign and Chief Justice of Pakistan refused to do it and after that it triggered this lawyers movement of 2007 so in this lawyers movement of 2007 basically lawyers and other people of Pakistan they started opposing this Parvej Mushraf and this was the time when judiciary stepped out uh, from this uh, you can say brotherhood ship or you can say a, a, a sort of tie up that was there informal tie up uh, that was there between this judiciary and military and they became or they came uh, face to face with each other head to head they started uh, looking into each other's eyes uh, after 2007 so just as the military lost some power some of its power after 2007 the judiciary was seen or it was believed that judiciary will become you know the messiah or it will become the savior of the constitution or defender of constitution and uh, there was big hope uh, or there was hope you can say uh, in people of pakistan that judiciary will sort out all the problems through which pakistan has been going for a very long period of time now supreme court uh, was again you can say or oh, this judiciary uh, that uh, got extra power or it became powerful uh, since uh, 2007 after after this lawyers movement was not means it was uh, uh, you know not under control of military after that but it was not that it was supporting uh, this democratic government either uh, what we saw that uh, two elected prime ministers right were uh, uh, sent home by this uh, supreme court one for the contempt of court and the other one for not being sagacious and righteous Muslim. So this has been termed many a times as judicial activism, right? It is called uh, judicial activism. It was called judicial activism activism uh, earlier on because many a times Supreme Court of Pakistan has took many uh, decisions that were falling under the domain of elected government. But uh, what we find now is that in 2018 there is a term in Pakistan that is going on. It is called judicial martial law right uh, judicial imperialism you can also call it judicial imperialism so it is getting more and more powerful and again it is uh, believed that uh, this all these things are taking place now mr sharif has said nawaz sharif has said that he was uh, sent home or he was uh, basically barred for life by supreme court because uh, this military they want uh, they hinted Supreme Court to do this thing and they want Imran Khan because Imran Khan is famous or is a bit a sort of favorite person of uh, this establishment. The, they are trying to promote establishment, is trying or they want uh, Imran Khan to become the next prime minister so they have the control of this thing and basically Mr. Sharif is saying that uh, they are again 
they have become one again uh, of course uh, judiciary is bit as uh, you know it it is not going to be it will not trust military that much as it used to do back in uh, back in time but uh, they are having a sort of they have developed a bridge uh, and they are uh, keeping this power in their hands so this new chief just this new prime minister or this uh, a uh, former chief justice of pakistan uh, mr nasirul mulk uh, uh, he was the one who this yusuf raza gilani uh, at that point of time he was uh, disqualified and this person uh, nasir mulk was part of this uh, of this bench uh, now let's wait and watch uh, for elections in pakistan the best thing this caretaker uh, prime minister can can do is uh, to make sure that elections are held on time as far as making elections fair and free this is something that uh, you want to be able to do it because all the things are already sorted out uh, for india it is very important that we have a, a strong democratic government in pakistan army we are going to engage with army that's what we find in media that government is going to engage with army but remember for us because pakistan is our neighbor you cannot change your neighbor right uh, pakistan is going to be there forever so the best thing is that uh, pakistan should have more uh, means democracy should penetrate deep in pakistan and i think uh, the only uh, segment of population that can do or make this change is the youth of pakistan educated open minded youth of pakistan if they come out on street i'm not saying they should do violent uh, revolution but if they uh, trigger this whole thing then we can see like government will be forced and in fact the army will be forced as well uh, to to change the way things are going on in pakistan and this will be a win win for the whole sark region second one is about settling disputes out of court now i'll take you some th through some preliminaries or basic information recently uh, this ordinance was uh, launched by government or promulgated by government uh, it is called uh, commercial courts commercial division and commercial appellate division of high courts amendment ordinance 2018 right uh, it it basically amended this commercial courts act of 2015 what it is talking about it is talking about mandatory pre litigation mediation now if it sounds gibberish or if you don't know what it is all about let me explain this thing to you mediation is a process of resolution of disputes by the two parties now uh, let's take example of uh, an imaginary parties a and b uh, they entered into a contract say for example of uh, doing business together or say doing construction together whatever and uh, there is a sort of problem between these two parties so rather than directly going uh, or knocking the doors of court what this amendment is saying is that first of all you need to uh, discuss things uh, between both of you between a and b they should engage with each other uh, they can have this mediator a uh, middle person uh, who will listen to both these parties and once you think that uh, this thing will not be sorted out between you guys only then you need to uh, knock the doors off court so this is what this mandatory pre litigation mediation is all about now this thing involves a discussion of conflicts uh, moving out of the loop of allegations counter allegations and assessing where interests lie in resolving the dispute that means rather than saying he is wrong or she is wrong you sit down together you talk about the things you have mediators and then you judge situation logically and the main agenda should be to find a solution for the problems that you are facing now options for settlements are explored and settlement is worked out through joint evaluation you can have mediator as i told you and uh, the participation of the disputants is voluntary now the problem is that in this uh, uh this new amendment what it says is that if uh, something is required on ad hoc basis uh, right if uh, if you need uh, that uh, the thing, things are sorted out asap or if you want a quick decision right uh, 
then uh, you can knock the door of court now obviously people will opt for this quick uh, resolution isn't it uh, what this amendment does is that uh, it passes this duty on these parties that are involved right rather than courts or uh, you can say this uh, this uh, resolute dispute resolution bodies and things like that the main purpose of this commerce Commercial Courts Act uh, was to enforce, to see that enforcement of contract is going on very well and uh, increase this ease of doing business in our country. But it has not been that successful in our country. Even today, many companies out there, international companies, they don't come in our country for production or other things is because what happens is that uh, they purchase a land or if they want to purchase a land or something, then uh, they will pay the money they will purchase this land and then someone will claim that this land belongs to them or that and the case will go on forever and then you will find stay order so you have invested huge amount of money now all your money is blocked and this case on an average goes on for five six years so you can imagine uh, the huge amount of loss a company will make uh, of course they won't be able to start their whole business operations but uh, they will be wasting more money so this sort of things are going on in our country and this is a big hurdle enforcement of contract is big hurdle in our country as far as uh, this ease of doing business is concerned now the thing is uh, as i told you that urgent interim relief uh, if you need that then pre-litigation mediation can be dispensed with that means you can get rid of it now what if we can learn from other countries right this sort of things are they going to help us uh, this are some of the questions that we need to ask if we go through italy and what we find there is that they have added this mandatory mediation but they have also added this bracket of opt out so what this means is that when you have problems with uh, say for example two parties having problems this a and b case so they first they need to have they can bring their lawyers and they have to attend at least one session of this mediation after attending this one session of mediation if they think that this is not going to work then they can opt out of it and then they can knock doors of the court but what we have found in italy italy is again you find uh, too many cases are pending in italy but because of uh, introduction of this opt out scheme of dispute resolution uh, almost 50 percent of this two lakh cases uh, have been sorted out or are settled in Italy and uh, Italy has seen a drop of 30 to 40 percent of uh, new cases being filed in the court so this is uh, working very well in Italy what we need to do here in our country is that we need to provide this sort of bracket what will happen is that of course two parties if they are not ready to stand um, with each other if they cannot talk right uh, then how can you expect them to to continue uh, this talk or resolution for three to four months uh, that's what uh, this uh, amendment is talking about that roughly you need three four months of consultation if uh, things does not work out then you can get extension of two months extra so we are talking about five months here and after that you can uh, go in the uh, in the court uh, so it will stretch matter more so let's have this opt out option and uh, we can have the same thing that italy had or same results now how to be garbage free under Swachh Bharat Abhyan, Goa has promised that uh, it will make, or the government has promised that, government of Goa has promised that uh, the state will become garbage free by 2020. It looks a bit impossible the way things are going on. And you have this picture of Kendolim uh, Beach of uh, Goa where you find plastic and glass bottles everywhere on this beach. Now the thing is, uh, what about civic senses, right? Uh, tourist destinations uh, they should be clean they should be you know beautiful uh, they should be smelling nice uh, visually they should be good people should be friendly and all these things now goa you know it's a party place uh, for our country you find people from all different parts of our country they head towards goa uh, for party and we find people from different parts of the world as well they come here but what happens is that you can try this thing right uh, you can experiment this thing uh, if you go to a bus stand i'm just giving you a rough example based on my own experiments right uh, bus stand compared to airports right uh, you find airports are a bit more clean than bus stands isn't it so or bus stations so when you go to this bus station a big one a depot or 
whatever we call in different parts of our country in different languages so if you go to a bus station or depot which is a bit filthy compared to airport uh, there are high chances right uh, people will throw away or chuck away that dust that rubbish or garbage here and there because things are already not in perfect shape or they are not that clean but you will hardly find people throwing bottles and their uh, wafer packets here and there in airport because it is already clean over there so when you have dirty this sort of uh, sea source right in your in your state or in any place uh, then people will not care uh, that much uh, when they are throwing this plastic and glass bottle here and there and garbage on the beach is basically also highlighting that uh, authorities are not paying attention to this health hygiene and protecting our natural environment now one very important thing that we need in our country right we are we have done everything and uh, this was uh, you can say it was brought up to national level by prime minister narendra modi no doubt the credit goes to him uh, that uh, he talked about this uh, swachh bharat he came out with this scheme he talked about uh, this open defecation and all these things the toilets are being constructed but without people's participation right nothing can take place narendra modi cannot come to each and every town and city and village of our country and clean rubbish for us we have to look after our own environment right if we develop this uh, or if we change our behavior then we can change things so one thing is motivating people and uh, coming out with this all these awareness campaigns and all these things through which we can change our behavior the second thing which is very important is enforcement right uh, you can either uh, nudge people you can motivate them and uh, there will be people out there you find them in the cleanest city in the world as well you will find few people out there they are dirty lazy enough they will throw their rubbish here and there so this sort of people should be penalized as well what we find in our country is that for a time being there were penalties and all these things but now things are back to normal if this is the way we are going to implement it then this is not going to happen at all so basically changing behavior enforcement is necessary we should set examples that if you are going to litter here and there then you will be punished and i think there should be heavy fines as well as uh, rather than fines i would rather say that community service uh, should be made mandatory right community service that if you are littering then you have to clean couple of streets on sundays this should be there uh, if we can do this thing then we will be able to this community service thing or punishment uh, by a community service is something that can work now uh, that's everything in articles we have some important news let me take you through important news of the day uh, the first one is government uh, puts a financial year 2018's growth at 6.7 basically 2017's fourth quarter has been good right uh, strongest uh, if we, if we go through all three quarters the previous quarters of 2017-18 then the fourth quarter has clocked a 7.7 percent growth and the main drivers were manufacturing and construction sector which is not bad very good in future it is said that uh, things are going to pick up and it's going to clock somewhere around it will we will be seven percent plus but at present uh, we are also facing some headwinds so let's uh, not be uh, you know too much optimistic about things that are going on now four or other figures that we are saying uh, four suspects in gauri case gauri lankesh as uh, he was killed last year and uh, this sort of things were going on right one by one we saw many rationalists the people who were uh, speaking out their mind uh, people who were logical who were rational were, were they they were shot dead by uh, this uh, you can say aggressive or you can say this radical elements that we find in our society which is a very said our society if you go back and study history then you find that we used to be a very open society you can discuss anything many things that we consider taboo today right were openly discussed back in time but i don't know what happened with us uh, in between that we have become so conservative or we have become so you know that uh, there is a sort of uh, fear being spread around that we are 
losing our culture we are means this western culture is taking over us and all these things right it's not western culture this is our own culture right west they have their own culture this is you can say more like a fusion of indian culture with the world and there are so many things that that we are using nowadays eastern items and western items jeans and t-shirt and all these things right they have been here for a very long period of time uh, pants and shirts have been here so uh, if you are saying that wearing clothes and listening to english music and all this thing is western culture then i'm um, sorry that is uh, not right right uh, this sort of things uh, the good things are uh, means things that are easy this cloth as well remember they are part of technology right uh, they are part of technology they are products that we that makes our life easy uh, same is uh, with yoga and Indian music is uh, spreading in different parts of the world. People are loving it. Uh, so you cannot say that we are taking over the whole world. This is how we have developed it. If you go back and study history, then you will find that all these things, right? All people coming in our country from different parts of the world have added knowledge and have, they have played a very important part in making our culture a bit more diverse. No bids uh, for AIR this air india this is a very sad thing for government now it has to go back to table and uh, come out with new rules and regulation or new deal it has to offer something a bit more you, you can say a bit more uh, tempting uh, for these investors to smuggled apes now you have this uh, uh, hulok uh, gibbons uh, you find them uh, in uh, Arunachal Pradesh, you find them in parts of Assam, right? Uh, very important. Uh, all details are given here. Schedule 1, Wildlife Protection Act and all these things. So help yourself with it, right? Download this file and read this item. You find this type of questions in your mains examina uh, in your prelims examination. Uh, WHO's report on tobacco. Yesterday, we celebrated the world. No tobacco day. And what we find is that uh, smokers means uh, the number of people smoking is coming down because of uh, extra tax on it it is considered as a sin good than uh, advertisement and i think that uh, people are nowadays more health conscious you know they are eating right youngsters and all these people so this is a good thing uh, modi meets uh, prime minister of uh, malaysia here is the country that you find this is the country right part of asean and this is a map of malaysia you see south china sea here strait of malacca we talked about this thing a couple of days ago isn't it where we are talking about india and indonesia so this is the capital of uh, malaysia kuala lumpur and uh, you find them in bits right uh, you have west malaysia here east malaysia is here then you have a tiny country called uh, brunei as well uh, where is brunei you find brunei in uh, this map of Malaysia with this uh, other news item coming from uh, Maldives uh, US imposes tariff on metal imports from EU challenging regulation uh, is a problem has been said by Tesla owner Mr. Elon Musk and uh, mother of all lizards have been found in Italian Alps uh, a small advertisement of government of India it's about 5th June that is celebrated as World Environment Day you find it in today's Hindu, these are your answers. These are three questions for you guys. And that's everything, right? Check out studyiq.com. Keep your environment green and clean. Look after your environment. And do share this lecture with other people. Hit the like button if you have learned something. And don't forget to pass your answers in the comment section. Thank you very much for listening. Jai Hind.